Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to JKS Tech Lab. Today, I want to talk about the Okta Certified Professional um, Exam and Certification. I recently took this yesterday, so I just want to talk about the process and why I decided um, to take it now. This has been on my list just because I like to explore all platforms related to identity and access management and things like that. Um, but this month they were having a sale where you could actually take the exam for 50 bucks. So I was like, man, you know, I've spent more than that on practice exams and books and stuff like that. So at least just try it and see, uh, kind of see, you know, how it went. And for me, uh, as somebody who works with ping quite a bit, a lot of ping platform, um, it was a little bit easier for me to to get acclimated to what Okta was doing just because I feel like once you get familiar with one platform, you can kind of take that knowledge into other things. It's just like anything in IT. So um, what I did was uh, well, actually let's just go over the certification real quick so you can see what it what it's about. So this is the certified professional is more about um, someone who who knows how to use Okta can manage Okta on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, setting up connections, users, all that different type of stuff. And you can see some of the skills that are on there. SSO, obviously, IAM, Active Directory, API, all that type of stuff. Um, and sorry if y'all hear the construction out there. But so that's what this one is about. So what I did was um, I just first went to see exactly what the exam was about. And I started with the, uh, yeah. I started with the study guide just to see what was on there. So it kind of takes you through what this exam is about, some resources, um, who should take it, all that different type of stuff. But the interesting thing to me um, and why it's been on my list is the way the exam is set up. So you can see right here, um, they use the uh, DOMC questions. And if you're not familiar with that, you can look it up. But basically, it, it changes the way multiple choice questions are handled. So you don't get all of your answers. You don't get a question and all your answers. You get a question and then you get each answer. And you have to answer whether each answer is right or wrong. Um, I really like that format of questioning. So that was, that was something that was interesting. And then also you can see um, there's a second part where it's basically performance based. It's just hands-on lab. You have to go in and configure Okta based on whatever they give you in the use case. So that was interesting as well because it's, you know, being able to actually take a test by showing that you know what you're doing instead of just remembering a bunch of things. I prefer that, you know, because it's really hands-on. So I went through, looked at that, and then um, I came down here to, there's some training stuff here, but what I, what I came down to is this right here. So it goes through the subject areas. And I always suggest with any certification that you go and see what is covered and then see what you know and, and fill in the blank. So I was looking through all this stuff. I was like, you know, a lot of this stuff I kind of understand, you know, just from being in the industry and being an IAM. Um, but I wanted to see if there was anything that was specific to how Okta did it or things like that. So I would just check out some of these resources. Um, some of them I just kind of skimmed over because, uh, you know, I was familiar with and then other ones, you know, I would go in deeper because maybe it was a little bit more specific to Okta. But I went through all this and, and just to kind of see, you know, what was on there, how much it was going to be on the test, you know, because they give you the percentages and stuff like that. So I went through all these. And then the main thing was this section down here, which covers what was going to be on the lab portion. So I wanted to make sure that I knew this. So what I did and which what is dope is Okta allows you to uh, create a, a dev environment. So you can actually go in and configure. And I like to do this um, with any platform that I that mess around with. I always set up a lot of different tools and stuff in my own lab. And nowadays, a lot of labs are online. So Okta does allow you to set up a dev environment. So that's what I did. And I just went through and, you know, set up the environment and was like, okay, let me go through and just do this you know so i would just go through you know randomly on my lab days just mess around seeing you know how to do these different things and if there's something i got stuck on then i would go back and you know see if there was something specific to okta that i needed to do but what i try to do first is just go through this list and set it up and a lot of it just makes sense like i said if you're used to any type of IAM platform a lot of this stuff is going to make sense you just got to learn how to navigate and so that's how I set it up first I went over to my little dev octo org and just got familiar with this this was probably the biggest thing that helped me um, and I always always am a huge advocate of getting hands-on so if you can get hands-on with anything that you're trying to learn or trying to become familiar with and I just keep stuff like this going in my lab 
for not just for certification. Like I just have stuff like this going in my lab just so I can learn and mess around with different technologies um, that I may not be using, you know, in my current position, but it, it helps me to get familiar. So I went through all that and just made sure that I knew how to do these things. And if there was something that, you know, I wasn't quite sure of, I would read their documentation, read their help, different things like that. But for the most part, getting hands on is far and above the best way um, to go through that. So I did that. Um, again, here's just some information about the test. And then I also um, went through their basics training, which is free. Um, I suggest going through it just just because even if you, you know, speed it up or something like that, just go through it just to get a, a good overview of everything that may or may not be covered or just a general overview of the platform itself. So I would suggest doing that. It's free. Um, it doesn't take too long. I can't remember exactly how long it was, maybe, a, you know, two, three hours or something like that. I don't remember, but um, yeah, I went through that. And like I said, a lot of this stuff um, was was review or basics or different things like that. But you never know what you may come across especially if you if you don't have any experience with an IAM platform or you know you don't know anything about how something like this would work I, I definitely suggest going through that like I said this one is free so if you go through that um, go through their study guide make sure you click the links to all this stuff you know just to just so you understand what's going on read their documentation but most importantly I would say um, set up a, a lab over there set up a dev or so you can actually get in there and just mess around like i said with no no guidance just go in there and get familiar like click on everything in there see what it does look at the options um just because this is what you would do uh if you're using it in a professional environment if you're new to it and they say hey we're we're deploying this tool you're going to go into the tool you're going to start looking through it you're going to start seeing what's what seeing what's what looks familiar, what you can carry over from other tools. And then when you get stuck on something, you're going to look up the documentation or, you know, the specifics about how that tool does it. That's how you're going to learn it. So I try to learn and consume information about platforms the same way that I do in a professional environment. So that's that's pretty much what I did. What I will say, like I said, this was probably the most fun I've had actually taking a certification just because of the way that their certification is designed those domc questions the way those work as well as the actual lab configuration portion um i think that is what made it such a fun fun certification because you're really just sitting there um configuring something and they make it so you actually have to prove that you know you're not just memorizing a bunch of things like even with the questions the way they use them um like i said and i think that's why the dlmc questions are, are supposed to be more uh fair or whatever like it that people are really an advocate of that and i hope to see more certifications using that because you have to not only know what's right but you have to know what's wrong and you know so you know how we we take everybody knows how you you know you could take um multiple choice questions you could see the questions see all the answers and you can if you have some experience you can definitely go through look at all of them and pick out which one's right but this the way this it doesn't show you everything at once so it's like okay is this right or wrong related to the question is this right or wrong and you have to answer each one so i really enjoy that personally and then like i said being able to get hands on i also did use um they have let me see if it's in the okay it might be in here let me see yeah so I did use their practice exam. So they have a standard practice exam. I think it has like 20 questions on it that you can just go through. And it gives you an idea of how those questions are framed, the format, especially if you're not used to that format of the DOMC questions. I definitely highly suggest taking that. It is free. Um, you can take it as many times as you want and it'll randomize things. And I think that's a good way to prepare so you can get used to that type of question. And then I also did their um, premier practice exam, which is more like the regular exam where it gives you a set of the DOMC questions. Then it gives you kind of a lab scenario. So I definitely highly suggest if you're preparing for this um, to do both if you can. Um, like I said, but at least do the free ones so you can get used to those questions. And like I said, if you if you take the free one and get used to the questions and then spend a lot of time actually 
in you know a dev environment dev org or if you have a, a dev or qa org at work or whatever if you spend a lot of time actually configuring and just playing around with it i think you'll be fine but um yeah if you have any questions let me know i'll still be messing around with octa just because like i said i set this up in my lab i have a dev org so i'll be still integrating it with different things learning more about it um and like i said i just like to keep tools like this um in my lab and i'm i'm, I'm i really appreciate companies that allow you to set up dev environments as opposed to like limited time trials or things like that because you can actually make this a part of your ongoing um, education your ongoing development integrating different platforms or different things into it so being able to have like an actual um, idp enterprise grade idp that you can actually mess around with with different solutions is is really dope in my opinion so yeah hopefully this answers some questions um like i said this was probably the most fun i'd have i have had taking an exam so uh let me know what you think if you got questions let me know till next time i'll see y'all later peace